Hey guys, welcome back again. Dave Dimension, welcome back again for another video. Welcome back to the channel where chaos and insanity will always reign supreme. So we're back again for another video. This one's a little bit different. We're actually talking games this time around. Um, and I've done a previous video called DC Universe Online, DCEOO, should you play it? Uh, just basically taking a look at it. It's a game I've played uh, for a very long time, over the past 10 or so years. I've done a video about that as to whether today in 2021, should you give it a chance? Well, we're going to do the same thing here, but this one is for Star Trek Online. And that's right. We're going to take a look. This, now, both games are long-running games that have been online for years and years. and maybe here for years and years to come. But is the content fresh? Does it keep you reeled in? Will it keep you, the player, entertained? Is it something that you should keep moving forward with? Or, if you've never played the game, should you? Now, obviously, in this day and age where it's all about the FPS, it's all about the graphics, it's all about the action, the gameplay, is it cinematic or not? Does it keep you engaged? Is it something that really pulls you in? That's the question we're going to ask ourselves today. Now, Star Trek Online, I have played it before. I've played it uh, <laughs> for a number of years. And I've had to start over a few times. And they have made some improvements. You know, if, when it first came out, it was pretty much set in the TNG universe. The Star Trek The Next Generation, after Voyager. You know, it was a continuation from there. Now, the last time I played it, you had several different start points. You could actually start all the way back in the original Star Trek's era. Or you could start in Star Trek Discovery's era. You could be a Klingon. You could be a Romulan. You, you have all your different options. You could start in the Klingon Empire. You could start in the Romulan Star Empire. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can do. And we're going to take a look at that today, guys. So, get ready. Grab your phasers. Get your tricorder charged. Make sure you're ready. We're going to jump into Star Trek Online. Should you play it? Should you come back to it if you're an old fan? Or should you pass on and look for the next generation of games? We're going to answer that right now. Now, we're going to jump into... Uh, first, we're not jumping directly into the game. I just want to give you guys a little bit of background here. So, let's jump into the next screen. So, obviously, you can see me right here. I have Steam pulled up. Steam is where I get a lot of my games from. And a lot of times, if you're jumping from computer to computer, Steam is going to be your best bet. You're going to have all your games in your library right here. Some of the games I have, <laughs> don't laugh, I have Transformers Devastation. Of course, I got Star Wars Battlefront. We got Skyforge. We got Dungeons and Dragons, Defiance, Champions Online. And I actually have the Telltale Games Back to the Future series here, among a few games. Now, I've played Star Trek Online before, like I said. Uh, they just announced a new update, a major online update, which is Reflections. This is more of an, they call it a major update, but it's more of an episode, guys. Reflections is basically about the Mirror Universe. If you're not familiar with it, it's a parallel universe where instead of the Federation, you had the Terran Empire. Think Romulans and Klingons and multiply that by 10, and that's how evil and twisted this Terran human-run empire is. Now, the way this empire works is they enslave alien cultures and put them to work. And instead of, like, with the Federation, hard work and determination gets you promoted or excel in your fields, the Terran Empire is about treachery, lies, deceit. You could kill, just like with, well, in some cases with the Klingon Empire, you could kill your superior officer and take over their command. That's pretty much how this is. Now, if you're a Star Trek fan, if you're a Trekkie, you've seen this happen before. In fact, most recently on Star Trek Discovery, they've revisited this kind of uh, situation where they crossed over into the Terran Empire, into the Mirror Universe. The Mirror Universe was first touched upon back in the original Star Trek series, where thanks to a transporter accident, Kirk found himself in the Mirror Universe. And his counterpart, vice versa. Now, Spock was rocking a goatee. That's usually the quote-unquote how you tell a bad person they have a 
They have facial hair opposed to their other self, not so much in the other series. We also saw this revisited a couple times during Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and as I said most recently, Star Trek Discovery. Now, travelers can go back and forth. They can travel between the Mirror Universe and the Star Trek Universe. So apparently this is going to have a lot of a lot of missions, a lot of gameplay that takes place over there. Now, they've touched upon this in Star Trek Online. Uh, I think maybe a year or two ago they did. Maybe a little bit longer than that. Because they have had content related to Star Trek Discovery and, of course, other Star Trek fandoms as well. I don't think they've touched anything related to Picard or to uh, Lower Decks, but pretty much all the other Star Treks they have. Now right now, I'm just waiting for it to finish downloading right now, and we're going to resume this video as soon as I get up to that point. Okay, so here we are with Star Trek Online. Now I just re-downloaded it, for, so it's a fresh install on my computer. One thing I do like is it automatically throws up this graphic settings have been set to recommended defaults. So it automatically adjusts it. Not that many online multiplayers will actually do that for you right off the bat. So that is one thing that's very cool. Now, like I said, I'm going to turn down the volume just a wee bit. So you can be Klingon Defense Force. That's your basic Klingon officer, like it says here. The Klingon Defense Force serves as the primary military force of the Klingon Empire, responsible for defending the Empire's borders from all foes. The KDF com commands the powerful space fleet of the Empire. The KDF High Command is headquartered on the planet Kronos. Serve the Klingon Empire with honor and glory to your house. Kapla. <clears throat> yes, I am a Trekkie. Next one, we have the Discovery Starfleet. This exploratory, scientific, diplomatic, and defensive agency of the United States Federation of Planets, or United uh, Federation of Planets, chartered in 2160, basically this is your Federation uh, just before Kirk, okay? This is the Federation of Planets, this is the Discovery area, era, which came just before uh, Captain Kirk became, well, Captain Kirk and commanded this Starship Enterprise. This is the time of Captain Pike and Spock. <clears throat> so, kind of prequel, but parallel at the same time. And then, of course, we have TOS, which is the original Star Trek, the original series. Constitution class. See, again, it says chartered in 21. Gives you the same basic information, except you're going to see differences in the uniform and differences in the ship. You got the Romulan Republic, like I said. Romulan Republic formed a space going fleet in the aftermath of the destruction of their homeworld. This actually takes place, this storyline and this character line, and so does the Klingon take place after Next Generation, after Voyager, after Deep Space Nine. Then we got our modern Starfleet. Now, it's okay if you go with the Discovery or the TOS. Because basically what happens is there is a temporal rift, a temporal event that basically you emerge from, but now you emerge in the, the present timeline of Star Trek. Okay? So there is a slight little difference there, guys. Now, the other one is the Dominion. Now, if you're a Star Trek fan and you watch Star Trek Deep Space Nine, you know who the Dominion are. They're basically a race that were foot soldiers and genetically created to fight for the Founders all the way in the Gamma Quadrant. So, so there you go. A basic little setup right there, guys. So, the question is, should you play this? Very much like DC Universe Online, um, there are aspects of these games that you have to pay to play, okay? I'm going to lower the sound right there, guys, so you can hear me a little bit better. So, 
you're going to have aspects of that just about on any platform. Okay. Now, also, if you notice, you get a nice rendering of the outfit and everything. Everything looks pretty, pretty awesome, le legit. Now, my thing is the gameplay doesn't always look as crisp. And you kind of have these generic-looking faces that don't look real. Um, we always want that more cinematic look when it comes to the games. Of course, when you're choosing your character, you can be a male or female. You can be Vulcan, or you can be some hybrid alien of some type. I always tend to stick with human. Don't hate me. Now, this would alter your gameplay right here, guys, okay? Do you want to be engineering, science, or tactical? Now, you can be a command officer in any of those fields, but this will slightly alter your gameplay and what roles you'll play in certain missions. Okay? Engineering is always a bit of fun. With science officer, well, you're going to be tackling a lot of issues where you're having to analyze things very quickly. There are some, some small puzzles that you have to solve. With tactical, you have to be very good on drawing enemy fire, using strategy, making sure you're getting direct hits. So I tend to go with engineering. Engineering you do have to do with some manipulations and of the engines, shields, things of that nature, and I kind of like that. So now we can go, we can make them look older. Put a scarred face. You can play around with the hairstyles if you want. Body stance, you can be like crawl, like a creature stature. There's a lot of different things, like twitchy, like a nervous cadet, thoughtful, swagger, like hey, what's going on, like Kirk. Or you can just do standard. We'll do standard right there. So his height's at about six foot one. We'll go with that. Now with the uniforms, you can play around with the uniforms. This obviously is medical. So we'll stick with that. Go on to next. Now I'm going to create a captain's name. Give it a middle name of Quinn, why not? And no, that's not really my middle name. Of course I'm not going to use my real middle name here. Now, our starship is going to be... Why not make it the Dimension, right? Now, just like with any game, when you first start it, you're going to have... <coughs> you can, oh... So apparently they have incorporated Lower Decks into this. <laughs> Who knew? Allow access. Yes, I want access. We hadn't heard from the Klingons for years. This is and obviously the uh, Discovery. Now, the Federation at war. Backstory. When the Shang Tsung was uh, destroyed. That was probably the last thing on my mind when I got here. It was the same for you, Cadet right? Tilly, who's we part of Discovery, so that's to become the tie-in. That's why she's there. Not all of us are fighters. Some of us are engineers. 
healers, scientists. We've been working hard on the ground and in space. We learned how things worked on a starship. And we learned how to work as a team. We've been getting ready to boldly go where no one has gone before. Pretty cool graphics in here. And today's your I mean, big day. I mean, it's not 100% cinematic, Today but you they do get pretty close. And begin your career as a Starfleet officer. It's gonna be amazing. So with this, you're a cadet at Starfleet Academy, and you're about to go on your training cruise. Today is graduation. People you can interact with have icons above their heads. You can press the interaction. I don't need that. Hey, there you are! Are you excited? I am very excited. Pretty soon we'll be reporting for duty on the cadet training cruise. Are you kidding? I said right? Now, you do get to choose some on, of your phrases way. as far as replies or asking questions. And a lot of times you have to play around with that because that may lead you to asking a question and you still get don't get the answer you want. So some of that can alter the storyline as well. Here's Lifeson, one of the best tactical cadets in your class. Uh, oh, uh, oh, after Evelyn, of course. <laughs> there you are. I want to, hmm, well... Oh, there's Ian. Let's... Cadets Quan and... Oh, hey, yes! I took the... <laughs> you... Thanks! I played this so many I think times I, see I can Kiro just skip right there. through. Come on. Now you go, eventually you get approved on, to go on to a mission. Um, the mission goes sideways, obviously. And here we have the Gets smartest person wonky. in your class, or so I've heard. And what happens it's not is, entirely well, fair. Uh, Hero is Cadet, it Captain is agreeable Falls. to be in your and presence. And you're given a field Our promotion. advice regarding Federate in the interest of... Eventually you, even though you're commanding on, that vessel, you do not have rank rank of captain right off the bat this isn't this isn't a, this isn't a uh a star trek i'll wait out here get the zone should be promoted. inside good afternoon cadet it is your assignment is that remains to be seen Now you can tell where you need to go either by an arrow or you see this little glowing transporter type glow right here on the side. And uh Good to see you, Cadet. Today's the big day. Congratulations. Judging by that look on your face, I trust this visit. Uh, well, you can relax. I'm happy to report that you won't be my new bilge officer. <laughs> Far from it. There is a matter I'd like to address, however. Your academic record is impressive, but I don't see your results for the advanced phaser training program. Get to shed some light on that for me? Now, with this, you have a couple options here. You can say I'm not a tactical officer, sir, I concentrated on, on courses for my career track, or many of my classmates didn't take the test either. Captain, is there that an issue? That's going to alter what how he responds, and also it goes towards your points as you progress over the game. Now, you guys see the video of me, I'm kind of like a little delayed, that has, has to do with the... Uh, my computer is being overtaxed playing this game right now, doing it at the graphics that you see right now, so... Let me just, uh... Oh, that's not what we wanted. Let's just go ahead and... You guys can still hear me, okay? So what I want to do is... 
Because if you go with many of my classmates and take the test, either captain is that an issue? Well, you're kind of putting the blame like, well, they didn't jump off the bridge. Why would I have to jump off the bridge? You know? Or you can say, well, I'm not a technical officer. I was focusing on other aspects for my career, sir. And that's what I'm going to go with. The Federation is at war with the Klingon Empire, Cadet. Shouldn't need to remind you that Klingons enjoy close combat with their enemies. And in mind, I want everyone on my senior staff to complete that program. No exceptions. I did indeed. There's a place for a cadet like you on my bridge, once you finish that phase, of course. My chief engineer and tactical officer have programmed a training simulator for you. I look forward to seeing your results. Cadets Tilly and Surveyor, respectively. They've been working on the simulation for me for some time now. Interesting pair, those two. Some of the staff question bringing Tilly along on the cruise as a junior. But her professors are sh Indeed. She'll meet you out in the quad. Okay, so now we have to go around and complete this test. This accuracy test as far as being proficient with a phaser. So we have to get a phaser and go to that training simulator. I still can't believe I got the chief engineer spot. Yes, it's just for the cadet training crews, but yeah, I was wondering why. Oh no, don't worry. Finnegan actually graduated. I guess the Irish are lucky after all. Finnegan's a little Easter egg to the original Star Trek series. No one was assigned to a constitution class. Not even you. That's crazy. How many times did you run the Kobayashi Maru? Kirk's up to two now. Another name drop, Kirk. So we better hurry or we'll lose our spot. Oh, I hate running. Uh oh, there's Ev, and she's looking impatient. There you are. About time. Programs loaded and ready to go. I hope. Yeah, those are pretty useful. <sighs> running. It's the worst. These little janky little killing type type uh, things you have to kind of do in certain certain missions. This is where we go get the phaser. I mean, the missions on here are they can be a little difficult at times, and this is an open world, so you can actually go on raids with other players online. There's fleet missions where you have to actually join together with other ships and take on, of course, the enemies, whether it's Romulan, Klingon, or Borg. Just go to the center of the room. Choose your pain! I didn't equip my phaser, I don't think. Enemy they changed the Klingon uh, simulator since the last time I played. Last time I played, they were regular looking Klingons, not the prequel. Nice work, Cadet. A few <clears throat> points below Severe's personal best, but it was your first try. You'll have plenty of opportunities to knock her from her perch at the top of the list once we're underway. That I do, Cadet. First officer's station is yours. That's if you want it, of course. The bilge officer spot is still open. Thought you might say that. 
You've done well, Higgins. I expect so. that trend to continue. Likewise. Wow, look at you, first officer. You're gonna do a great job. Congratulations. That yeah. thing the captain said about the build officers. Wow, it's pretty here. funny, though. I mean, we don't even have those anymore. You don't want to come Wait, off as we? too weak. Anyway, you don't want to first come off officer. As too cocky. How does it feel? You know, I love her, but Savea's a little too, um. Standing right here, Tilly. Seriously? Yeah, of course, we gotta take our shuttle to the ship and go on to our mission. Now, hear this. All cadets report to shuttle bay to prepare for departure. So. Okay. The rest, anyway, I'll make. You gotta do a lot of. There is a lot of uh, voice interactions, um, more a lot of conversations that take place. There are some cutscenes, not too many, but the cutscenes you do come across. There's a lot of characters that you interact with that are actually voiced by Star Trek actors, whether from the original series, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, even people who've been on Enterprise, Star Trek Enterprise, that is. Discovery, I mean, anywhere and everywhere. I mean, they have events with Q, John Delancey. There's a lot on here to play around with. It's fun to play with. There is a pay-to-play aspect, but it's not as heavy as some multiplayer games like DC Universe, for example. That's very heavy pay-to-play. Here, you don't necessarily have to pay-to-play, but if you want certain DLCs, you want certain extras like special uniforms, Maybe you want a higher class ship instead of earning it. That's one thing that you would do is there are options as a pay to play. You can definitely farm certain things by doing missions. Uh, a lot of the things you pick up, you can actually either repair, sell. So there is a marketplace on here, but it's not as heavy pay to play as other platforms are. If you're a Star Trek fan, this is going to be your go to game. You'll be spending hours upon hours upon hours. All cadets, please board your shuttles. And let's go straight to the ship. Are you ready to head to the ship? Let's go. I do apologize if some of the gameplay seems a little choppy. I can't believe we're finally. I'm recording doing this. it live off my computer using OBS, which, if you're not familiar with, is open broadcast software. Ooh, 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 look over there! That's the Glen, one of the new Crossfield class ships. And I'm noticing no as it, as my screen is appearing on well, Starfleet Academy OBS, anyway. it does seem Maybe to be a little bit delayed, not as someday. smooth as I actually now, see on my other here. monitors. So She's I a Malachowski class. Guys. Captain Schaefer's pride and joy. Good speed for her class, definitely maneuverable. A stout, solid, battle-proven design for sure. I can't wait to see what she can do. Let's land and find out. Okay, we need to check in with the de- Sylvia Tilly, Acting Chief Engineer, reporting for Welcome duty. Welcome aboard. What's your name, Cadet? Ah, uh, yes, here we are. Acting First Officer. You're all set. Report to Captain- And now we report to the Captain, so. Apparently Tilly's waiting for the turbo lift. And now you get to see the bridge. Very swanky looking bridge too, pretty pretty sharp. You get a nice scope of view here. Let's talk to the captain. 
Ah, there you are. You're right on time. All decks have reported in. We're ready to get underway. Let's start things simple by getting the old girl out of dry dock, huh? Contact dock control and get clearance to depart. After we're cleared, close the shuttle bay doors and disable the tractor moorings. Dock control has cleared us to depart. Acknowledged. Carry on. Shuttle bay doors are closed. Acknowledged. Carry on. So you just, even though you're a commit, you're a first officer, you still have a lot of work that you have to manually do to make sure everything is all set. There is Res, a lot of take targeting. Us out. One quarter impulse. I happen to play the PC version, so with targeting, I'm using obviously an arrow here with my mouse to help with the targeting. This game is also available on consoles, so you can use a controller for this, or if you have a USB controller. You can use that as well. Duly noted, XO. Erez, take us out. Maximum thrusters. And now I'm at my station. Cleared from dry dock, Captain. Acknowledged, Helm. Set a course for Vulcan. Warp 4. Course Again, laid in, sir. Some of the facial expressions Engage. and movements on the game as far as these cutscenes. It could be better. The animation, the actual You know, it's special effects on here look fantastic, but some Captain, of the I'm faces picking up a distress call from the SS Fortuna. Are Audio a little only. off. Put them through, comms. Not sure if that's by design, but you can still see a little boxiness boxiness. So, uh, characters and we could really use some help here. Let them know we're on our way. Helm, lay in a rendezvous course. Altering course, sir. ETA three minutes. Transporter room. Prepare to beam over survivors. Sir, sensors can't read anything in the vicinity of the Fortuna. Communications are out as well. Keep trying to hail them, comms. XO, let's discuss the situation. A little bit more interaction here. Well, XO, you heard the distress call. Afraid not, this is the real deal. Her Starfleet regs, we're the closest ship to the Fortuna, so it's our duty to assist. Now, because my expertise is in engineering, it brings up it's strange that transmission was audio only. A warp core emergency shouldn't affect the communications. Now, if I was tactical or science, I might have something else that would appear here. Not usually, no. Good instincts. How would you proceed here? Good call. There's something about this that's not sitting right with me. Now, going to full red alert and having weapons at the ready, that's a little bit overkill. Agreed. Yellow alert. Surveyor, bring the shields up. Get down to the transporter room, XO. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to go to the transporter room and there are Klingons attacking the ship. Okay, Klingons attack the ship. They actually kidnap the captain. The captain dies, leaving me in command, and that's when we have to take on the Klingons. That's just the first routine mission. It's a tutorial mission, basically, to get you, uh, you know, comfortable with it. A lot of the missions will get harder and more complex, and like I said, you can actually select what missions to go on to. There's other things that you could get to do. The detail on the ships, out because you can see the outside of the ships. You do have a captain's ready room. There's a lot of stuff on here. If you're a big Star Trek fan, you will love. Some of the mechanics could be a little bit smoother. Some of the mechanics are a little bit frustrating at times. So with that being said, if you're a diehard Star Trek fan, you don't have a lot of options as far as games out there. This is probably your only option right now for an online multiplayer. There's no other games out there on the market. At least when it comes to comics, you have DC Universe, you have Marvel Avengers, you have uh, City of Champions, and I think there's a new version of that one coming out soon as well. So, 
that's what you have to weigh. I mean, the animation's getting a little bit better, but still some of the faces look too generic, and the movements look almost like puppets when they're moving around. The arm movements and how they walk are almost puppet-like. Um, so it really depends on the type of gameplay you're looking for and the gameplay that you're accustomed to. What is natural for you? Because you don't want to play a game and feel completely unnatural. You want to feel a decent flow. You want to feel engaged. You want to feel fulfilled in these games. So the question is, do you want to play this in 2021? If you're a diehard Star Trek fan, again, I know I keep sounding like, a, a re, like I'm on repeat, this is your only option, really. Unless they come up with an Orville game or Battlestar Galactica multiplayer, which would be awesome. And I, they had one uh, maybe five or six years back. But you don't have that many options, really, right now. So, you could skip this. Is this going to feel... Is, is playing this game going to blow you away? No. No, it's not. Um, one of the last really intense Star Trek games I played was actually Star, Star Trek Starfleet Academy. It had real uh, recorded uh, dialogue and um, video shorts in it where Captain Kirk and Sulu and Chekhov were at Starfleet Academy and they were your professors and you went on these missions. And it had a full, full cinematic storyline going with it. Unfortunately, we, we don't get that here. Not one bit. So, with that being said, should you play this? I can't honestly sit here and recommend it. I can't. As a tricky myself, as a big Star Trek fan, I love Star Trek. I love being able to be in command. But it doesn't give you that full command feel because you have these little missions. It's not 100% what we see in the TV shows. It isn't. It feels like it's lacking something. It's lacking a little something extra. Maybe if they made the ships where you could explore them more, where you can go to any part of the ship at any part in time, that would be great. But unfortunately, they don't have that kind of aspect. They kind of drive it in more mission episodes. So, I would love to see here and say, yes, download this game, play it. It's free to play, which it is free to play. But it all depends on your gameplay and what you're looking to get out of it. That's the most important part right there, guys. It's one thing if you're spending money on a game or not spending money on a game. If you're dropping 60 bones on a game, it better be the best damn game ever. Or if you're spending maybe 10 or $12 on a game. There are those options. So with that being said, guys, I can't honestly recommend this game right now. Now, if there's improvements down the line, maybe. If there's an improvement down the line, I could see potentially maybe doing something like that. Now, um, there are other games that I'm going to be looking into. But right now, I've reviewed DC Universe Online and now Star Trek Online. I'm going to be checking out some other games and giving you some, uh, some thoughts on it. Is it, is it up to snuff? Is it something you want to play in 2021? And those are the answers that I'm going to try to give you guys. So... Until next time, this is Dave from Dave's Dimension saying keep on busting, and I will always catch you on the flip side.